Joker. <gasps> Three, two, one. Billy Bob Thornton is coming to town. This weekend only from nine to five, he's going to blast off to a town near you. Who the fuck is Billy Bob Thornton? That's an actor. I know that name, but I don't even know what he's from. He's a... Uh... He's the one who was in... He was briefly married to Angelina Jolie. Wasn't he, like, in Bad Santa? Uh, he was in Monster's Ball. I don't... Oh, yeah, Bad Santa. There it is. There we go. Friday Night Lights. I don't know any of these movies, but somehow I know his name. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a pretty, um... Memorable name. Billy Bob Thornton. That's two first names. <laughs> Oh, That's gosh. William Robert the, the Thornton. Thornton on top of it. Yeah, I think the Thornton really seals the deal there. It's for just him. it's because Billy Bob is such a joke name. Like, yeah, that's... he's like a country like British king <laughs> with the Thornton in there. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. We're talking about your nonsense. Well, welcome everybody to the podcast. Hello, episode two. Or three, depending on whether you count episode zero as episode one. You could establish your own Who's canon. ready to get plod today? Who's ready to game? I got my 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 oh my my gamer juice ready. I'm ready to freaking game. <laughs> That's like you know plaid shirts, the the ones with the squares. Yeah. I always used to think it was played, because you know, my my uh Spanish speaking side would just naturally go to that, but then then there's plod, the like real bougie way of saying it. Really? My plod shirt. It's pronounced plod. No, just, I've always I'm, thought it was played. <laughs> oh, you're fucking with me. Nice. <laughs> yeah. No, it's actually. Wait, now I forgot what it is. Oh, God. <laughs> That's because we're not bougie. We're just fake bougie. Well, anyway, it's going to be an awesome episode full of stories to share and and news and news to stare yes let's get right into staring the news i mean we've been apart for like a week and a half already pretty much it's crazy dude time flies well maybe not for you but for me it has been it, it actually has been flying considering since like where, where i am right now the internet is so crap i can't really do a lot so my my days mm. have really just like blended together plus i've been waking up like really late because i got way too adapted to the sleep schedule back in chicago and the time zone back in <laughs> chicago yeah, One day I woke I up at like that. the day, the, the immediate day after I got back to Puerto Rico, I woke up at 3 p.m. the next day. Oh, gosh. Yeah, that's how jet lagged I was. So it's like 3.30 there right now, right? Yeah, right now it's 3.32. I just woke up basically a half hour ago. So, yeah, the schedule is not the best yeah, yeah. over here. It makes the days feel a lot fucking shorter. I'll tell you that. Uh, well... At least you're uh, getting passing the days by until you get that better internet. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. So like, all right. So so like clear clear up the situation with with our little subs. Um, you already know I had to go back to Puerto Rico, but there was a little bit I of had a to kick this son of a gun out. Yeah, you had to kick me out because onto I the kept, streets. I, I kept I just like, you know, I kept shit, so shit you lived on, on the, the couch. streets of Chicago for two weeks, right? And then, how did you manage to get back? Well, okay, so. Basically, I became so I, w I was taking a stroll down downtown Chicago, right? And these guys they, they came up to me and they tried to mug me, right? But since I'm quick on my toes and I'm smart on my streets, I was able to escape the situation and fled into the sewers, into the Chicago sewer system. Oh. Which there, I I encountered a horde of rats. And um, it took it took me they a while. They were super evolved rats, yes, right? It, but it took saying? me a while to win their trust and and you know mm. and win the love of the rat princess. But you know, since I'm not into into rats, I didn't exactly want to consummate. But it was more of a political marriage, if you would say. And uh -huh. and using their powers, I was able to survive the sewer system. We waged war on the sewer gators, and we prevailed that quite easily. We we established a system and, and a spearhead and invaded their their um civilization took them down and then using all my resources from the rat kingdom i was able to book a flight back to puerto rico and here i thought you found the the, the antidote to the corona and made millions off your patent oh no i actually i found a way to perpetuate the virus 
and use it as a biological thanks to the rat genes yeah, right? yeah. I, I'm, I'm currently holding on to it as a biological deterrent just in case I need a little bit more leverage in political I see. pushes because <laughs> we know how good you are with leverage from that dead resident video <laughs> oh yeah yeah, yeah you oh. might have to worry about how I'm handling it. it's it's a very fragile vial and I just like you know I just have it sitting there on my on my um, night desk so oh, so how's it been since you got back uh hot it's been really yeah, hot that's definitely a different yeah difference it's like and i think yesterday it was almost like 92 degrees so it's pretty oh, fucking man. hot some people would be very very jealous of of that fact yeah but you know the thing with puerto rico it's it's a very humid sticky heat i'm not i'm not very much of a fan of that plus we can't even go to the beach so why bother you know that's true you know we ain't florida that's <laughs> <laughs> that's true but, um, no, I mean, pretty much everything's been pretty chill. It's been nice just chilling with my family and with my parents that I don't get to spend a lot of time with. The The only downside has pretty much been the internet because since since we live, like, over here in, like, the boonies, um, I actually tried to get better internet access, but the... But Liberty was just like, yeah, no, you guys, you guys live way far up in Hicktown and our signal just doesn't reach, so <laughs> we can't really do it. But the, the whole reason I'm even in this situation is because, you know, uh, my grandma tends to be um, a tad bit paranoid, but like, I, I got to give it to her this time because, you know, they're old and I was going through the airport. God knows if I would have caught it along the way. So I had to self quarantine myself for two weeks in my parents' house before I could go back to like my house house where my good internet is. I mean, I don't that's understandable from their side. Yeah, like with the whole situation with the virus. And then I think you said she like recently, she recently had got some out of trouble, surgery. Some health yeah. stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. So she's recovering really well, though. That that's that's a the good side of it. She's walking around. Everything's super good. But it was kind of just like, uh, it's OK, Grandma. You never leave your room anyways. I never leave my room anyways. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it would have been fine, but if you if you if you want to be better safe than sorry, Just I can stay understand on that. The, on the safe yeah, side, yeah, yeah. I've been the same with the the chiropractor. Now that you you have you've gone, I didn't want to go because I felt like there's a even if it's like a one percent chance that I could get it by going there, I didn't want to bring it back to, to the everyone apartment. here at the apartment. But now I'm like I'm thinking I might go back because you know now I don't really you know I'm not putting anyone at risk anymore. Yeah, no, yeah, I hear you there. No, it's pretty much the same here. Like, the only times I left my house, this is going to sound really, really jarring, I guess, to the, to the little subs. I, um, there's, they probably noticed that our ups, upload schedule has been a little erratic, but that's usually, that's pretty much just because of the whole situation with the internet. It's kind of been, because every time I need to upload something or anything at all, I have to make a drive to my grandparents' house and stand outside mm. of my grandparents' house next to my bedroom <laughs> window road trip. to catch the internet to be able to upload. This is the good old days, man. This, <laughs> <laughs> this is bringing it way back. Yeah, no, it's like this really, this whole situation has really regressed us back like like 10 years almost. To the days when uh, in high school, my grandparents went on, on a vacation and didn't leave me a house key for some reason. And I had to break in through my window every day after school. <laughs> I'm not even joking. This is actually happening. That just sounds like an adventure to me. I don't know. That's, yeah, it was pretty fun. It's like some Ferris Bueller's Day Off kind of shit. I figured my neighbors, you know, they, they knew who I was, so they weren't really like... They weren't suspicious when this, yeah. when this yeah. small teenage gremlin man was crawling through a house window. <laughs> yeah but well hopefully liberty 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 comes through well i mean because uh, you know we got to hop on the rift again oh that's true we got we got tokens to i get. tried to play the other day and like i was rocking like 400 ms hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a lot of a lot of fun you can imagine i was just playing a lot of tft because tft even if you have like some lag you could still pretty much get through yeah. So that's pretty much what I've been doing to get coins. But no, um, Liberty. And we got TFT Mobile. Do -do 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 God, I haven't been able to get that song out of my head. It's your fucking fault. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. But uh, no, by Monday, I'm already allowed back to my humble abode. So 
nice. by Monday everything will be back on track and back on schedule plus also we're working on a lot of um, videos that don't have to do with LPs and they take like a little bit of a lot more editing effort but um, you guys will enjoy those though I, I think they're pretty funny oh, yeah. <laughs> like a couple of the, the concepts alone that we came up with oh yeah or I guess you mostly came up with but oh yeah but you, you know, we'll get there when you, when you see you them. definitely refined because a lot of my ideas were pretty like you know it's one of those situations when you got like a wild card but his ideas aren't necessary are, you know they're good but they're just a, a little tad unhinged and you just gotta zip up the, the straight jacket a little tighter and put them back on the rails that's like you for me. It's just like. <laughs> so what you're saying is, uh, you're the Charlie. What is it, Charlie Kelly? And I'm uh, the uh, Dennis Reynolds yeah. here, the methodical. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, the absolute sociopath. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, but no, yeah, a lot of good shit coming, and like, um, I don't know, man. Content-wise, things have been pretty sparse, and I've been seeing it. Like, I know we talked about this last podcast, but one of the biggest examples, man, super mega, like now they're like only doing the podcast because it's it's too risky for them to get together mm. and do LPs so I think like for the past two weeks they've only done the podcast and I've seen other so the truth is revealed they don't like pre-record a lot of stuff huh? no well they did that's how they got so many episodes of Animal Crossing because oh. they sat down like one day of the week and played for like 16 hours straight <laughs> Jeez. So it's like that's what we needed to do. Well, well, we almost did that. We didn't go sixteen hours, but we would do not like, with Animal Crossing. But yeah. yeah, we did do it with some other games that are coming out. Oh yeah, and it, it's it's gonna be good. But like it's been happening yeah. to a whole lot of other like content creators. So the same has happened to us in a way. Like we're still trying to find mm -hmm. ways to figure out where we could do LPs, e even from like the distance, which we will like figure out by the time I get back to my to my house house but um but for now you know our upload schedule won't be as consistent as usual but it you know it'll still be there you're still going to be getting like you know a good amount of videos during the week it's just obviously it's not going to be you know as day by day by day as we were doing it before because you know situation's tight and i'm sure the little subs understand we'll figure it out man we'll anyway right. so you know everything's good uh, with me, I've just been um, definitely trying hope. to get back into the groove on my own side of stuff, you know, now that... Because usually when you're here, like, I, we just focus on doing mostly quip safe stuff, but mm -hmm. now I'm trying to balance how to keep everything together with my channel and streaming and also editing and all that. Mm -hmm. um, and working out, too. I think I was telling you how feeling mighty sore today. <laughs> yeah, about the ring fit. I don't even oh, know how yeah, that dude. shit works. So... Uh, I don't know if you were here when I bought it, but it was it was a hell of a long time ago and I never opened it because I wanted to make a video about it and I finally got around to that and I actually got into it afterwards. Like I've been doing it almost every day and it sounds pretty troll at first, like it wouldn't be a legit workout. So if you guys don't know, it's a kind of like Wii Fit. It's a, it's a Switch workout game, but also an RPG. So <laughs> I like it a lot because it actually has a game built around it. It's not just like a follow along workout instruction thing. Yeah. Um, but it has you do a lot of different stuff. Like it's not just uh, aerobics. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Like the ring itself, you can squeeze it and pull it. So it's kind of like weight training also. And then it has you do like squats, like sit ups. Uh, I don't know a whole bunch of stuff. There's like four different categories. So you can do core, muscle, legs, and like yoga, and yeah, I don't. It's it's basically an at-home workout. Like it's legit. <laughs> Damn. I mean, like, hell, if if it works, it works, man. Like for me, I've pretty much had to settle with um just doing the regular old, you know, push up, sit up, handstand, push ups, like aerobics, just like you said, just like whatever I can do to just like keep myself yeah. active, but um. You know, I mean, I'm sure like a, like a regular routine or like a following a YouTube video would probably have better results, but but it's not as fun. I'm trying to have fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's definitely not as fun. I mean, I get bored of doing my basic shit, and then like, it's like two times more exhausting because it's so hot here that I immediately oh, as as soon as I do the first push up, I'm already like drenched in sweat. Bro, when I was there, I wouldn't even work out. Like, I just go outside, walk a mile, and that's the workout. <laughs> like, you sweat so much. 
just yeah. walking around there. And God, you know how much it's I crazy. hate sweating. I despise sweating, but oh well. It's nature of the beast. Yeah, but that's um, why we like all of our like typical foods are like super greasy or fried stuff because you know we make up for it just by being by yeah existing just by there. existing there. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I hear that. Yeah. But you know, shit. I mean, yeah, you know, it's easy to complain. Just be like, oh my god, situation sucks. Everything's stressful. But like, I don't know. I've been. I gotta say, things have been pretty chill. You know. The, the, I mean, the, mm-hmm. the first few days before I got back here, you know, figuring out the flight and how I'm going to get back home were pretty stressful just because of the whole situation. But once I actually got back home, and even though the internet has been fucky, it's just been pretty, like, just chill. I don't, I don't know about you. I don't know how things have been for you ever since um, I left the sewers of Chicago. <laughs> no, yeah, everything's been all right, like... I said it's just been about getting back into routine and all that. So mm-hmm. yeah, because I saw you started uh, like a new LP right. and everything on on the yep. Munch channel. I know it's been a minute oh, yeah. <laughs> since uh, Sword and Shield, and before Sword and Shield, I hadn't done an LP for a while. So the my fans have been pretty happy with that, um, and I've noticed a lot of comments that are people like, "Oh, I used to watch you back in like." middle school or even some people are like fifth grade so it goes back and they're like now i'm like what 15 18 years old and i'm glad to be back oh that's really wholesome that's nice to hear yeah because i'm doing a game um called pokemon clover which i don't know if you know anything about it but it's uh made by some anons on 4chan oh good (laughs) i know exactly where this is going it's a, you know, it's it's not the most tame game, but it's actually a really well-made Pokemon game. Like, it has over 300 original Fakemon, which is like fan-made 300. Pokemon. Uh, and it has, like, not everything has changed. It's basically Pokemon Fire Red, but all of the dialogue is new and different. All of the Pokemon, uh. obviously, are, like, kind of references to memes or, like, inside jokes. Uh, and... Like, as far as the Pokemon game goes, it's actually challenging. So I've been really enjoying it, even though I'm only on, like, episode three. <laughs> I mean, hey, dude, like, sometimes it's, like, in the most unexpected places where you find some quality shit. Oh, yeah. The, but, well, that's the no, thing, too, is they're, uh, they're 4 channers, but they're part of the, the Pokemon board on there. So you know they know their shit. Like, they've been playing Pokemon from the beginning, or a lot of them, and they know, like, what's good and what's bad in a Pokemon game. So mm-hmm. they're able to make, like... In terms of quality and and challenge, like probably a better game than the actually Game Freak can make these days. Uh oh! Don't don't let them hear you say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but shit, dude, that's actually good. It's good that you're able to like get this balance and like figure stuff out for for all of this. Because like even even when I was over there, you know, I was just there were moments where I was just like, I that where. I guess I could describe it where I like felt bad or maybe just like worried mostly of just like like man he's like yeah it's cool that he's focusing a lot on like quip save and all that stuff but there's always that lingering thought where I'm just like man am I am I gonna am I getting too much in the way from like his own stuff and all that stuff so yeah. that that was definitely something and that, that was I definitely had in my something mind. I thought about too when when we first got the idea and started it up um but since like Sword and Shield had just happened, I felt like I kind of wanted to take a break anyway. Um, but now it's just about, you know, figuring out the balance. And I mean, I only usually want like edit one series at a time for Quip Save, so that's like not that much work, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been fun. It's been chill, you know, getting uh, our personal space back to oh, yeah. Karen. Well, I, I mean, and, uh, even on my side of things, finally I'm able. <laughs> Finally, I'm able to do all the things I never could. I can go on Rule 34 again. I can I can finally watch porn again. <laughs> but uh, no, dude, like and and like that's no that's no like cut to like being around because it, it like being over there and all that stuff is always a good time. But like considering the situation and not being able to go outside and not being able to do a whole bunch bunch of stuff, it's just like. You know, it's definitely a situation where we're not able to enjoy this in the ways that we really want to, you know? Yeah. So. Oh, that's a, that's the thing that's still, like, kind of hard. Like, we, we want to go outside, man. Sometimes it gets really rough, like, just having to stay inside all day. Yeah. I'm sure all of the viewers can relate to that. Ooh. Like, uh, I got a Snapchat from my sister yesterday, 
and she's like, I have never been this bored in my whole life. Oh, man. I'm just like, oh, man. It's just like, it feels like I'm at school at home. Like, the the equality the of, like, boredom. Especially me, since, like, my internet right now is kind of, like, shit. So I can't do a lot of stuff. It gets extra boring. I've just pretty much been stuck on Animal Crossing, dude. If I'm not editing, <laughs> I'm playing Animal Crossing. Hey, at least you got that. Oh, yeah. I saw you posting, uh, like, you got some... You didn't like the villagers you got? <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Like, okay, the only one I like is Bill, and I'm having a hard time, man, because I have, like, this set of villagers I want. But I would have to get rid of one of them to keep Bill or I would have to, you know, get rid of Bill to get them. But I have such an attachment to Bill right now that I did not expect because he's a duck and I think ducks are dumb. But he's so (laughs) he's just like he's so me. He's like all about like working out and he's super optimistic and motivational. Oh, he's a workout. duck. Yeah, he's a workout duck and he's super adorable and he's super inspirational and optimistic. And he calls me blaster. And I was just like. God damn it, Bill, you're making this very difficult for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a thing with the workout ones, because uh, on my island, Igly calls me Blaster, too. There might be the workout ones that call you Blaster. Yeah. Though recently, everyone's been calling me Burrito now. <laughs> <laughs> what? Which, uh, I mean, you know, I'll take it. That's, that's accurate. <laughs> I think supposedly if you tell them that you don't like the nickname they give you, you could give them a nickname that you want them to call you, like a custom one. Oh. Apparently. I'm not I've entirely sure, but like I've never tried it either because I feel too guilty going like, nah, that that name sucks. Fuck you. Call me this instead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like way too it's bad doing that to them because they're so that. I, cute I, I get, and optimistic about it that I just I can't bring myself to do it, man. I just I, I just can't. Same reason why I can't get rid of Bill, man. I just like him too much. I've grown too attached to Bill. <laughs> He's just, he's so, so adorable and so friendly and so peppy. I can't bring myself to get rid of him. So I'm probably going to end up just sacrificing one of my dream dream villagers to keep him. No. I gotta, I gotta. What what are your dream villagers? Well, much like everybody else, I want to get Raymond. I don't know if you know which one's Raymond Uh, is. The glasses wearing cat. Yeah, the one with heterochroma. Just because he reminds me of David Bowie. So I really want him. I also want Coco because Coco is really fucking creepy. I don't know if you know which is that one Coco the, the is. The rabbit with the whole eyes. Yeah. Yeah. I want. I, I've seen him. You know, I, Animal Crossing Twitter is basically my Twitter now. So <laughs> I'm, I think I've seen almost all of them. Oh yeah. I also want. I Audi. want the robot frog. Oh, the robot. Oh, Audi, I actually yeah. I got the robot frog in my in in a deserted island. If I had known, I would have like brought him to my island so you could get him you lucky bastard i didn't know you wanted him <laughs> you gotta give me a list of like which uh villagers you want and if i run across them i'll well, get I don't them even in my know village. how to kick ones out because my island's been full for a minute and the one villager that wanted to leave was one that i didn't want to leave uh, and i was so sad but after like three attempts i was just like you know i need to make more space so i'm sorry but you, you gotta go yeah for me, Egbert left, but I think only one villager could ever want to leave at a time, and I think it's like completely random. Like, there's no one set yeah. time frame of when they'd want to leave. I'm pretty sure it's random with what villager wants to leave, but from what I've noticed, it, it always happens on a certain date and then 15 days after. So if you do time manipulation, you can like skip 15 days, but then you know your island will be covered in weeds. So yeah. It's it's rough, you know. I'm having I'm having a struggle with time skipping like too many days at a time. Like right now I only skip one day at a time because I'm currently remodeling my um my island. I'm already in that process. I I finally like beat the actual game and I got KK. But um I'm worried about skipping too many days at a time because I have like certain storylines going with characters like Mabel and Sable. Like if you talk to her, every, if you buy stuff and talk to Sable every day, you eventually like become friends and she gives you like mm. patterns for furniture customization. And I'm worried, I don't know if it works this way, but I'm worried that if I skip too many days, it's gonna like break that friendship or whatever. Yeah, I've been getting to that too, but she still hasn't given me any dang patterns. It's been like two weeks, dude, come on, Mabel. It takes a while. I had to skip like a, a a lot of days but you definitely have to like talk to her every day and buy shit which is not a problem for me because every day they have some fucking awesome outfit that i want to buy i've spent 
I think on the island I spent more money on just like moving around the houses and buying clothes. <laughs> I think in one one clothes shopping spree I spent like fifty thousand bills. Jeez. In just it's one thing. We got shopping rich spree. off turnips, huh? Oh yeah, for sure. But that's pretty much been it. Just like getting my 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 island ready so that eventually we could do an island tour of our own islands. And show that off to the little subs, our own little personal islands. Oh yeah. And uh but that's pretty oh, by the way, you mentioned Twitter, your Twitter being Animal Crossing Twitter. I actually have a funny Twitter story. So su- super mega every year. Oh they, gosh, who's been hitting you up? Who's who's been sliding in the DMs this time? Not 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 like that, but su- super <laughs> mega super mega every year has what they call Thanos Day, which is every like one day a year, Thanos takes over their Twitter. <laughs> Interesting. And they just yes. they just uh, they tweet out um Tweets like almost as if every they were hour. Thanos. Yeah, as if they were Thanos, which is just like them tweeting different Thanos quotes from the movies. But there's always a really fucking like weird image attached to it. So like Thanos snapping away Eric Cartman because he wanted to get his his gauntlet, or Thanos like <laughs> being a stripper. But it's like these really weird Thanos images and fan art, but with like his quotes from the movies. So they're a super jarring contrast. But this Thanos day, they held a, a Super Mega X Thanos fan art contest. Ah, I, I thought they were gonna go with Quarren Thanos day. You know what? I think you should be, you should, you should like send a resume over there because that's a, <laughs> that's an even better idea. <laughs> but um, they're holding an art contest, which like it was 24 hours only, so I had like a day to like do a fan art. And um, soon they're gonna announce the winners, and and there's three winners, and you get a you get like a whole like prize package from them. I personally, I don't think I'm gonna win, and frankly, I, I don't I don't I don't mind as long as I get get them a good chuckle. That's good enough for me. Cause cause all I did I made like this comic strip, post it on Discord or like. So I can see it or or describe it to me as best as you can. (laughs) I'm going to describe it to you and post it on Discord. So basically, I just did like a little comic strip and and I'll put this on on the video for the little subs to see. I did a comic strip of um, Nathan from the Two Lovely Uncles music video that I showed you. And uh, a a masterpiece in in music. And um, it's basically just Thanos using the Infinity Gauntlet to bring back Uncle One and Uncle Fudge. And, oh gosh! And then they and then they, <laughs> they 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 bring him the ice cream that he wanted so desperately, and they 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 run off into the sunset while thanking Thanos in the sky. All right. Finally, their dreams have come true. It's finally he got his two lovely uncles back and his ice creams. I fucking love that song so much, dude. But, and his two lips. But yeah, dude. I mean, like, shit, it'd be great if I win the contest just because it'd be like, you know, recognition from, from my favorite little Let's Play boys. But yeah, I, I'd be good enough with them just seeing it and going, ha, that's funny. <laughs> Is it, have you uh, scouted the competition? You think you, think you stand a I've chance? I've seen a couple of ones and there's some really funny ones. Like it's mostly, no one's actually trying to make this masterpiece of like art. It's mostly them just making like fucking absurd jokes. Oh, I posted it on the Discord. <laughs> All right, let's check this out. Oh God, baby yoga. Oh, why? <laughs> I open it up and that's the first thing I see. Baby Yoda. Uh, so the reason I, uh, I'll talk about it in a second actually. Let me see your comic book first. Oh, this looks very JoJo-ish for some reason. Maybe just the face of Ethan or whatever his name. Ethan. <laughs> Nathan. Yeah, Ethan, Nathan, you know, same same. Also, difference. I made Thanos very beautiful. He is. He is quite a handsome man. <laughs> <laughs> There's some juicy lips right there. Thank you, Thanos. Syria, three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I replicated the Syria poster from the fucking music video and everything, and his like SpongeBob inflatable balloon. Are you? Are you? It, 
is this trying to say a flight to Syria could be as little as three dollars? I mean, hey, that's what the that's what the music video said. <laughs> they were gonna buy three three ice cream cones, but then they saw an ad for a trip to Syria for three dollars. And they took it. It's what they you know, always they took dreamed the money of. Money and ran with it. Yeah, it's what they always dreamed of—a holy vacay. <laughs> so I, I have one question. Yeah. And I know this might not seem like it's a very important question. Yes. What flavor is the bald man's ice cream? Well, you know, Uncle Fudge. <laughs> Uncle Fudge likes himself some fudge, but you know, art art is all about personal interpretation <laughs> so you gave him tar <laughs> <laughs> no it's 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 brown colored kind of <laughs> it's i not- like the idea of him uh eating a little bit of you know just charcoal ice cream <laughs> this is a disgusting concept but you know how like if like you're bleeding from your rectum your poop just comes out a whole lot darker. No, I don't know, but yeah, p- please go on. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 poopy butthole juice. <laughs> ah, it's mag- delicious. Yeah, and nutritious. And nutritious. <laughs> yes, you're you're recycling uh, all the nutrients. <laughs> don't don't. Oh man. <laughs> but yeah, reduce reuse. We <laughs> recycle. I mean, hey, who knows? Maybe I'll win it, and then I'll be able to shamelessly plug Quip Save. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. The dream. No shame, no gain. Oh, hell no. Can't have shame in this business. What are you talking about? <laughs> so I went on the Discord to check out the picture, and the first thing I saw was this horrendous image of Baby Yoda. <laughs> yeah, the Baby Yoda doll that, I think that you're you going to have to show now. Oh, yeah. Uh, but the reason for it is I was editing one of the Animal Crossing episodes where Gunch gets in his baby outfit. <laughs> And I think you said he's like, he looks like a stuffed doll. Oh my God. <laughs> and this is the example I'm going to use. <laughs> I mean, dude, it's pretty accurate. It's oh. pretty fucking, it's horrifying though, dude. Why would anyone make this? So, okay, obviously he's not wearing his cloak, but this is actually a fan made plush stuffed doll or whatever. And it goes for $350 on Etsy. Damn, dude. I don't know why. I don't know who who the fuck would buy this. Somebody definitely would, though, dude. You know they would. Like, it's 16 inches for $350. Just like I don't my know, packer. man. And on that note, <laughs> uh, let, let's move on to the next <laughs> topic, which is Kim Jong's pecker. Have you heard? Uh, yeah, I heard that it's not neither confirmed nor denied whether it's it's uh, sixteen See, he had inches it surgically or not. Removed. Yeah, I think that's confirmed. Yeah, but it was botched apparently. But no, dude, that oh. whole situation was freaking weird. Like I remember when I first saw it, I was just like, "All right, this has to be a joke. This has to be some kind of like the interview type shit." And then I looked into it, and I'm yeah. just like, "Holy shit, this is real! What the fuck is 2020?" Like Kim Jong Un died man. from it's... a botched heart surgery, and now his like feudal lord sister is gonna take over. And then on top of that, <laughs> to make matters worse, there's this whole side of like, you know, women in power like Twitter, but not like you know the actual like good and progressive women in power. Just like the women in power who just like regardless of how much of a demon woman the the woman could be, <laughs> all they care about is that yeah. she's in power, and they stand her. And I'm like, you do realize that. This isn't some new development in the government. She has been part of this regime and she has handled like the political propaganda and face of Kim Jong Un for since he was at the start. Like this woman is just as bad and maybe maybe not worse than her brother. Yeah, it's like Cruella Deville becoming uh, the queen. Yeah. And people And people, people going people like, nuts. "Yes, queen slay. You slay those Dalmatians." <laughs> Oh god! And, and it's kind of just like, are you insane? <laughs> like, like, do you not give a shit about the people who are like being oppressed? But you know, whatever. Twitter's gonna be Twitter. The no, internet's dude, gonna because, be the internet. Because because you know, w- women need power. That's fine. That's, That's it. all fine and dandy. But it doesn't matter if she good or bad. It's, it's she girl. 
We stand. We stand. That's true. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether she's oppressing the masses and horribly dictating her people and into into starvation and absolutely no freedom and fear. We stand. But the thing with that is, it, it's like, I mean, I don't really know how it works. I'm not very, you know, smirt with the politics, mm-hmm. but uh, I know that the it's it's basically been just that family in the rule of the oh, whole yeah. time, right? It was like their grandpa and the dad and then the son. Yeah, I think for like four generations. So I mean, <laughs> uh, regardless, it's gonna be someone horrible yeah. if that if if it runs in the family. Yeah. But oh well, there's still a bunch of Twitter sent boys and girls who wanted to step on them. And I'm My just favorite like, sure. thing that came out of that though was I don't know if you've seen all of The Office. Yeah. But um, you know how Daryl hires this Japanese guy in the yeah. warehouse. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, in Japan, number one surgeon, I work for Yakuza boss. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! Surgery go wrong. <laughs> oh yeah. Yakuza boss die. <laughs> I have oh, to run okay. away to America. That's Daryl, it. give me job. And then it's like, but secretly, I botch heart surgery <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> they pretty much fucking predicted it, dude. Oh, I had forgotten about that. I can't believe I didn't think about that. <laughs> that was my favorite thing to come out. But yeah, I think the first day, every news article was like saying he's he's officially dead. And then the next day, they're like unconfirmed from the exact same like CNN, Fox, like all the same news websites are, are, are going back on their statements. It's like, geez, they're really that thirsty just for the headline. Yeah, dude. I mean, 2020 has been going wild. Didn't you see like the fucking... The CIA confirmed the existence of unidentified flying objects. Oh, dude, yeah, that's actually another thing I wanted to talk about. And nobody gives a shit. I feel like <laughs> that, yeah, that literally flew under the radar for most people. I just, and it's crazy. I just feel like 2020 has been so fucking wild that, like, the possibility of aliens is the least of our fucking worries. Like, we don't care, dude. We want our haircuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think at this point, the world is, is getting... To, you know, we've crossed the threshold of shittiness, so it's like, yeah, just let everything out there. We yeah. don't really care anymore, man. And then, man. then just, discovering, just like, 20 new sarcophagi in Egypt, and everyone's just like, put them back in the ground! We don't need this! <laughs> <laughs> but, dude, it's crazy. Like, obviously, like, okay, it's not that I don't believe in, al- in the possibility of aliens, because I definitely do, but, like, I just feel like people don't give a shit because they're able to rationalize, like, I don't know. Maybe that's just like some military new flight thing from another country that isn't saying shit about it or whatever. I don't know. I think at this point, like most people have seen so much aliens in media uh and like everywhere that uh, honestly, if they were real, we wouldn't probably care. (laughs) We'd just be like, all right, like help us out or just like, (laughs) you know, chill in space, do whatever you you want. I don't, I don't know. It's just like, mm, I'm just trying to like, I feel like find. this could be a whole episode eventually, like yeah. us talking about aliens and what we think. But I mean, I've always been kind of a, a believer because of the whole idea that space is so vast yeah. that it'd be kind of crazy if there isn't anything out there. But at the same time, I've watched, you know, all those Kurtz Gagas yeah. videos on Kurtz, the, uh, the Great Filters and the Fermi paradox. Yeah, with how like, how vast things actually is that for like just because of the sheer vastness of it, like there's no like we should have seen something by yeah, now. Yeah, and there's no possible way anything would reach us mm-hmm. unless there's like some incredible like past our comprehension kind of like fucking time bending space bending technology. But like well, and that's the thing. If you go far down the rabbit hole enough, you could like you could start talking about wormholes or like light speed travel or like, you know, maybe these these beings aren't even physical like we think. Yeah. You know, maybe they're actually like ethereal creatures that can just they don't have a physical form, so they could be anywhere at any time. Like we don't we don't know. There's a lot yeah. of possibilities. And then it's not impossible and improbable, but most people tend to like imagine like aliens as like carbon life forms, even though like the odds of another planet replicating another species under the same circumstances as us and evolving in the same way for them to recreate 
our same humanoid like type biology Mm -hmm. is such like a far-fetched idea that it's almost like absurd to believe that that would be the way it would be because so many things have to fall into place exactly the same way it did here to have another like carbon-based humanoid life form and then that the one yeah like yeah the the one i don't know if the word is I, i can't think of it but basically the one place I could see that happening is if we get to Mars eventually and somehow you find human remains there. That'd be pretty wild. <laughs> like, yeah, millions of years ago or billions or whatever. Because Mars is in our same solar system and it's pretty close by, so technically you could see a similar development happen there. But that's only because it's like literally the same circumstance, the same solar system. But, like, I don't know. What, what if, like there was a civilization on Mars millions of years ago and they self-collapsed and that's why Mars is a barren wasteland now. I mean, who knows? That'd be pretty nutty. That would be pretty (laughs) nutty. But yeah, it's like like a whole bunch of stuff that would have to go right in so many cosmic levels for us to ever interact with another intelligent species. Not saying that's impossible, but just very improbable based on the knowledge we currently have and the understanding and how we're able to conceptualize things. Because, you know, another justification I have is like, you know, human understanding, I, I'd like to think is limitless, but it's all just a matter and a factor of time. You know, yeah. where it's just like back in the day, we used to think that, you know, the universe was um, Earth centric, that we were the center of the universe or like we used to think that the sun was a was a benevolent God and and storms were demons and all this a bunch of stuff <laughs> because like our understanding only led us to believe so much. And there's no way anyone in that time period could have ever conceptualized things or understand things the way we do now. And you could you could rationally think and, ra- you know, and rationalize that that could still be the case yeah like that could still be the case like (laughs) we're just not able to understand these things right now because we haven't had the time or fallen into the proper circumstances to see or discover different points of views or different ways of the universe working i mean it was only recently that we we were able to confirm like einstein's theories on like gravity waves and that the universe like is more of kind of like a sheet Mm -hmm. And like that mass is what pretty much dictates how gravity works and how everything works because people tend to think of a black hole like this big hole or giant black ball in the middle of space when in reality what a black hole is was just a super massive um, like object that like bent and dented so deep down into the sheet you know the fabric of space the fabric of space time right yeah it just left this big like cratering hole that's just sucking in everything and that's the like the weirdest part is when space and gravity gets that bent that like that much pressure like i don't it even causes like time dilation what really happens yeah exactly we we still don't fully understand it because it's not like you can go to a black uh hole and you know test it and it's so (laughs) crazy dude because like no matter i can i can say these things and i could understand how these things work but for some reason my brain just can't properly fathom how you know where it's like you could logistically you could tell me this works like this because of this but there's part of my fucking ancient simian monkey brain that just goes <laughs> you know fries itself trying to figure out Yes, but how? <laughs> you know, just like, no. like I, I don't, Not I good. get it, but I don't. <laughs> and and for me, that's just like a testament of how complex and how just like fucking weird the universe is. That it's just like, at the same time that it's fascinating, it's frustrating that you just can't figure these things out in a way that you could properly fully comprehend. That might just have to do with me not having enough study. Maybe this is something that Neil deGrasse Tyson could do like in his sleep, you know, conceptualize (laughs) how this all physically works. But definitely me, I've watched a lot of Vsauce and just like you said, Krugset or however you pronounce that shit. And like, (laughs) no matter how many times they explain it and literally visually show me it, there's still a part of my brain that's just like, huh? Hey, at least what? Neil deGrasse can tell us if math is related to science. Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> deGrasse. <laughs> what a name. 
What a legend. What a, what a legend. They killed Drake on Degrassi. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what this really, like, makes me think? Like, this whole them revealing the record situation is if they thought that this UFO videos and all that going around were so, like, little that they're just like, yeah, we don't know what that is and we're just going to uh -huh. tell the public that. Like, what are they still hiding, you know? Maybe. I guess I, I, I was there. My train of thoughts just definitely takes me on like a different path where it's just like if they were confident enough to reveal this to the public, it's probably not a big fucking deal. You know, even to them, it's probably just like, well, you know. the thing is, too, like the U.S. is very like secretive of all this oh, stuff. Yeah. But if you go to records of other countries like the U.K. has always had. Well, not always, but like in recent times, in like modern times, they've like been very public about their ufo records and like military you know videos and all that that like you can just look this up online and it's all confirmed it's all there for a lot of countries the u.s i feel like is just now catching up to them oh well. and being like more open about it the british are, are, are strange people okay <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. well regardless of how this ends up I, I don't personally believe this but i would love the idea of like the Greek gods actually being like aliens that lived among us I mean, back in the I day. God, God, I hope not, because Zeus was kind of like a the bastard. Egyptian gods. Zeus was was a bastard, man. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, they they had the power, man. We were basically ants to them. So. I guess so, but like for some reason, Zeus focused all that power on being horny and and, and fucking adulterous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, have you ever seen this Just anime horny aliens, slash? Dude. <laughs> yeah, they, no, no joke. There's a there's a hentai, or maybe it's a soft core, because I don't know if there's actually like nudity yeah. in it. But it's this this alien comes down, and it doesn't have a physical form, like I was talking about earlier. Yeah. So it attaches itself to this young girl, or like teenage high schooler, or whatever. Oh boy! And it wants to experience what sex is like, basically. <laughs> God damn. Because it can't do it. it ha it's an ethereal it being, you know, it's, it doesn't have a physical form. So I don't know, man, you know, the, the possibilities are endless. That, that reminds me of one I read that was called like My Balls, where it was just this guy, I think it was in college or whatever. My Balls? Yeah, and no, My Balls, where like supposedly oh. like a satanic ritual was being done on him, but it got botched. So Satan got stuck in his balls and like... If he Hell if he yeah. ever <laughs> if he ever ejaculates, it'll release Satan and the apocalypse on the world. So it's pretty much him going through his life constantly being tempted by shit, but he can't he can't come or also release the apocalypse on all mankind. So it's the opposite of Devil Man. Yeah, pretty much the opposite <laughs> of Devil Man Crybaby. It's just Crybaby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's crying because he can't yeah, nut. Yeah, he can't bust one. <laughs> his, his demonic nut. Well, let us know, guys and, and guys and gals in the comments. Uh, what, what do you yeah, think? Yeah, what do you think about, about all these? Do you, do you believe in in the uh, the extraterrestrials, the ancient aliens, the possibilities of other worldly creatures out there? And who knows? Do you believe that they're all a it's bunch of? It's always been one of my favorite. Bunch like, of horny cat girls. <laughs> <laughs> But no, it's definitely been one of like my favorite discussions. I'd imagine that's what you were gonna express too, just like the possibility of extraterrestrial life. Oh yeah, horny cat girls, dude. I'll, oh yeah, you know, can't live with him. Can't live without. Can't him. live without him, dude. <laughs> by the way, talking about like mythology, did you see the uh, the tease for like the new Assassin's Creed game? Uh, nope. It's Not gonna be. <laughs> it's gonna be like Norse mythology this time. The last one was Greek mythology. This one's gonna be Norse. Oh, but, I saw someone post a, oh, well, Ubisoft is trending right now, so, or well, it's being suggested to me, but I saw someone post a thing, and and they were like, is that Ezio? Yeah, it like it's like, a like teaser image. We, we posted, like, on our Discord, because what they're doing is, I don't know if you know who Boss Logic is, but he's a very, like, famous, like, like artist and, like, editor and photo editor, but he's doing the art for Assassin's Creed. And they were oh. doing a stream teasing the game by him doing actual art from the game, which is super awesome. Mm. And then the last image, like, it, it's just pretty much, it looks so much like God of War, dude. <laughs> like That's the newest so awesome God of War. how, like, just internet artists nowadays, if they get, like, recognized enough. enough or enough, yeah, like, the, the guy that did Detective Pikachu, that's another great example. Yeah. But apparently it's a Assassin's Creed Valhalla world premiere trailer tomorrow. 
Damn. So, so they're yeah. going God of War with this shit. Yeah, dude. I'm excited because like, okay, look, 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 man. Oh, and yes, also about um the guy who did Detective Pikachu, Arvalis. Fucking love him. Dude, yeah. he's fucking great. If you guys haven't checked that shit out, check out Arvalis. I've literally been following his deviant art since I was like in the ninth grade. Like I love that dude. <laughs> but um I've known about it because you know, just knowing Pokemon, like yeah, he you does always like the see those like hyper realistic ones. Yeah, and his are yeah. just so good because he goes like biologically mm-hmm. accurate with them and shit. That it's so great. I know you love a little biology. Oh yeah, I, I love I love the, the biology. World premiere trailer tomorrow. Yeah, April thirtieth. Now you guys know when we recorded this, so by the time that this goes up, it'll already be out. So yeah. go check out the Valhalla trailer. We'll probably talk more about it in the next episode then. Yeah, for sure. But um. I've never, okay, I don't know about you with Assassin's Creed, but much like most people, in the first years of Assassin's Creed, I loved it. I loved one, I loved oh, two. Oh, same, dude. I really liked Brotherhood, but I think, no, wait, actually, that's not it. I loved I two. I fell off after three. Yeah. The one with the American oh, Revolution. Oh, the American one? I fell off after Brotherhood. Brotherhood was, was the last one I played. Because well, I didn't. I didn't even play the American one, so same same as you. I, yeah. I Brotherhood was still Ezio, right? Yeah, and but then they like did like one Ezio. more after that, which I think was Revelations or something. I don't know. But, yeah, um, it was the Ezio trilogy because I know that that's how they bundle yeah, it now. It was Assassin's Creed Two, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, and I think Assassin's Creed Revelation, where it was old Ezio. Brotherhood was definitely the peak for me. Well, like maybe not the peak, but the the last one I played. So <laughs> yeah, with that same for me. Like the last one was Brotherhood, and after that, I was just like. Eh, I get it. It's just more of the same. Yeah. yeah, I get it. And then like three came out. Not a lot of people liked it because it was super slow. Four came out. I've never played four, but I've always wanted to. Was that uh, the pirate one? Yeah, Black that's Flag, the pirate right? one. I've never played it, but I've always felt like I should. Yeah, I've heard like from YouTubers, I guess, that in retrospect, four wasn't like it shouldn't have been as hated as it was. It had like a lot of unique mechanics to it, mm-hmm. but just because the Assassin's Creed name at that point was already kind of hated like I think it, it was like people well. hated it because it was like it again yeah it was Assassin's Creed and it was like the least Assassin's Creedy out of all of them mm. it was more like pirate which you'd think I would do because I was already tired of the Assassin's Creed formula and I like all that pirate shit like I've always wanted to play Sea of Thieves I don't know why I haven't it's free on like yeah and like that game looks fun dude I always watch uh, Summit on Twitch play it. Yeah, I want to play that. Maybe we could get around to doing that for like a one-time stream or something. But, um, yeah. so I, I should probably play that. And then they did like the, the Egyptian one and then they did the Greek one. I didn't really care. Even though I love Greek mythology, I was just like done with the Assassin's oh, Creed Oh, I actually formula. did play the Egyptian one briefly. You did? And Odyssey? Then, no, wait, yeah. it wasn't Odyssey. No, Odyssey was, Origins, was a Greek one. Origins. That one. I thought it was all right, but I don't know. It's still like the same old Assassin's Creed. And, like, I, I get it, because, you know, Pokemon is obviously very similar. Like, they just keep basically re-skinning the same game. Yeah. But, like, you have to be into Assassin's Creed, I guess, if that uh, makes sense. Like, yeah. And you like, have to be a lo- love that franchise and the game mechanics and all that. People started getting a little bit more back into it because they changed a lot with Odyssey, the recent Greek one. Mm-hmm. Which they pretty much turned it into The Witcher. <laughs> <laughs> Weren't they doing a new game that's like uh, Greek mythology too, but it's like more cartoony? I don't know. I just know the last. Didn't one you hear was, about that? Was it was Odyssey. like gods and some. I don't know. It's not an Assassin's Creed game. It's it's a whole new game by the developers though. Oh, from Ubisoft. Yeah, or hmm. Ubisoft Montreal or whatever. No, I actually haven't heard it. I just know like they definitely went very mythological with Odyssey, where you fight like the gods and shit, and even in Origins, you can fight like Anubis and a whole mm. bunch of shit. But like somehow now they, yeah, like the 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 Assassin's Creed mythos has gotten that big. Yeah, because they about. Got, they got rid of the fucking future thing. Mm. Which you know what? Honestly, in my opinion, good idea. But it was pretty much already like done with me, so I didn't go back to it. But I'm a huge shill for North mythology. <laughs> yeah. Like right, I don't know if this is a hot take. I'm I'm pretty sure it's not at all. But even though I liked playing as what was his name Desmond Desmond I always felt like all that shit was like just way too much like there was why you know yeah like why (laughs) I felt like it wasn't handled as well as like the past story Mm -hmm. it never was so when they stopped it I was just like you know what it's probably for the best (laughs) but uh no yeah I I mean depending on how this looks depending on the trailer and the gameplay I might check out 
this game just because will it again, be better than God of War though? Like that's the real no, question here. I like, don't come think on. so. <laughs> that is it. That is that is a big like. Oof! I don't think exactly. so. Exactly, and that's where I feel like people might, you know, because I don't know. I feel like people are pretty. Uh, black and white when it comes to critiquing that type of stuff they'll just be like well you know they're it's basically they're doing the same shit as god of war but worse so even though they're completely different gameplay wise i mean that was pretty much what happened to odyssey they were just like they're just doing the witcher 3 but in people's opinions worse yeah but it it was just like i don't know i'll check it out man i mean again like i'm not even gonna lie about it i'm a huge huge shill when it comes to north mythology like you, you put anything Norse mythology in my face, in my face, and I will at least give it a chance. Oh yeah, like like Thor's cock in, the, in, that, <laughs> in that one video. Yeah, that was a really funny edit, dude. I uploaded that to Twitter, and I just put like Gabe without context. I even put it on Instagram, where it's just that one screenshot. You 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 love to see it. It's just it's so funny, dude. It's so fucking funny. Like I don't care, man. Pe- people tend to be just like, oh my god. Uh, God knows what this will do to my image. I don't give a fuck what it does to my image. It's hilarious. <laughs> they could think I'm I've in love with been those more, cars. I don't uh, care. Of a Greek mythology guy, you know. I, I'd let uh, what, what's his face, uh, Thanatos. Thanatos, yeah. If I was his his child, yeah, yeah. Why not? No wait, uh, Kronos. Kronos. Oh, Kronos. Was the one who was Kronos. The kids. That's the one. Thanatos yeah. is the of the dreams or whatever. No, right? Thanatos like the is the sleep. angel of death. He's like the equivalent of the Grim Reaper for Norse mythology. Oh, okay, maybe I don't know my shit at all. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, uh, check out that trailer I just linked. You yeah, know? maybe we can wrap no, it yeah. up. As with, soon as soon as, as soon as I saw like the thumbnail, I I remembered it. It's like yeah, let's let's watch it real quick so you can see. It's like, like Ubisoft. I, I think it's also Monster Greek Hunter. mythology. Oh, true. Yeah, I didn't get what the gameplay was really like, but yeah, it is very much more like Monster Hunter. You know, like just hunt one big creature at a time. Yep. Yeah, I remember seeing this trailer. But it looks kind of trailer. open world-ish, though. That's what I'm curious about. I remember seeing the trailer and people were just like, oh, so it's just like budget it, Monster Hunter and Dauntless. <clears throat> and I was just like, I don't know. I mean, let's see. I think I remember seeing something about it that didn't really hook me. I don't know if it was like the animation of like the characters yeah, looking like very the basic. designs look kind of weird, I will admit. Like the the actual humans. The, yeah, the, the monsters, characters. I think, look really cool. Oh, yeah, I'm looking at it now. kind of weird. Ew. Okay, yeah, no, yeah. now I see what you're talking about with the humans. It's like they have the anime face, but it's like you can tell it's Western. Yeah, their made, proportions so. don't like match the face style. Uh huh. I wonder what the gameplay is gonna be like. I from the game from just that little trailer, which shows no actual gameplay yeah, at all. I see it more Breath of the Wild ish, uh, like open world exploring, but with. Uh, maybe that's Witcher actually, because I've never played Witcher three. But that's pretty much I know how it is. <laughs> yeah, it is like it's called Wild Hunt. So I assume you gotta like hunt for certain big monsters, and that's pretty much what I expect out of this one. Well, it's like okay, that's one thing with The Witcher that's super deceiving, man. The Witcher has always been where it's just like all of its titles is deceiving, where it's just like <laughs> the title that it gives is such a small part of the story. It's the same thing happens with the books, like Sword of Destiny, and whatever, and like. Um, the Last Wish, it, like those titles are usually like one very small story of the entire book. And the same thing happens with like the games. Like at, the only one I'll say is like pretty accurate is like Assassins of Kings because that one de- definitely is focused on that kind of like storyline. But I didn't even know they had taglines. I, I thought it was just Witcher 2. Yeah, Witcher it, was, one. it was The Witcher. <laughs> that was The Witcher 2, Assassin of Kings, Witcher 3, Wild Hunt. Like oh. in the game, yes like if you don't know the story you could assume it's just like oh yeah it's just going around hunting monsters because that's also a witcher's job but obviously like Geralt's story is a lot more than just being a witcher and also yeah. the wild hunt are actual characters within the lore and with like um slavic i think or polish mythology where they're just like these wraiths that were from another like dimension and they would like take your soul and shit but it's like it's 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 the witcher is another series where i'm just like a giant shill for man <laughs> like i fucking love the witcher you already know i have like my i have all the witcher books i have my witcher netflix i have all the witcher games i watched a witcher netflix se- series and i thought it was good but um 
I've always I always try to get people to at least play The Witcher 3 because in my opinion, in my humble opinion, I think The Witcher 3 is the just like the greatest game just of all time. Like crafted. Oh, so, so I've heard. <laughs> like it's just, just like uh, I think the uh, only part I played of it was that first hunt where he's like killing a griffin, I the think griffin. it is. Or, yeah, the royal yeah. griffin. And that's why I assumed the rest of the game was kind of like that, but No. There's very few contracts, like monster contracts that are part of the main story. Mm. Your monster contracts and all the actual like witcher stuff tends to be part of like the side stories and the witcher contracts you can do to get more money and get more equipment. But the main story is definitely more about, you know, a lot more complex stuff like political stuff. There's very like a Game of, Th- Game of Thrones storyline in there where it's just like who's going to become the king. And like, there's a whole, the thing that I love about it is it's not just a black and white choice. This is one of the things that the Witcher 3 game has, the Witcher has been praised throughout all of it, that every decision you make has, is a shade of gray. There's always going to be its upside and there's uh, the downside. And yes, there's always going to be one that is more beneficial than all the others, but it will still have its downside because like... In the game, you have to decide who's going to be the king of Redania, whether it's going to be um, the really, like, fucking racist, horrible, torturous psychopath, whether it's going to be this mob mob king who's just, like, he's not as bad as the horrible, racist, socio, like, psychopath, but he's still, like, a crime lord, and he's not exactly the best person, and he's trying to get rid of a lot of your friends. Or will you get them to side with like the other kingdom that's invading because it'll stop the war and save more innocents even though it'll bring a new type of government that the the old country isn't used to. You know, it's like that. That was, that was that's a lot to process. <laughs> that that's what I'm saying, dude, where it's just like there's so much that you have to take into account and like so much it teases your personal ideals. It's these decisions that poke at your own like moral code and what you think it's best. So there's going to be people who are just like, yeah, I'm totally fine with a totalitarian government as long as there's no more war and maybe some freedoms are given up. But at the end of the day, we become more prosperous or no, fuck those guys. They started a war with us. I'm going to side with the racist just because I'm spiteful towards the warmonger. You know, it's definitely like different people will always have different choices because the choices are definitely aimed to um, challenge your own moral compass and your own moral codes. And like, there have been times in The Witcher 3 where like I started the game thinking one way and seeing what happens to the people within that world because they feel so real and the effects of the choices you make are so real that I've come out of that game with like a completely different worldview. Of just like how Damn. politics work and how war affects people and, you know, how discrimination affects people. And it touches all of those things. And that's why I fell in love with that game because that's just story wise. Gameplay wise is a whole different monster that I'm not even going to get into. Maybe I'll do it in a different podcast because this is <laughs> something that I could talk about on and on and on. No, I could tell. It, <laughs> that was the whole. Witcher salesman pitch right there because I def I want you know I definitely want more people to at least you know dip their toes into this I'm not trying to be like a complete show where I'm just like you have to play this game or you're not a real gamer at the end of the day I don't really give a shit I love the game and I enjoy it but I definitely think that it's the game even if they only play three I definitely think it's the kind of game that everyone who who wants to play a game where they feel like every like Everything they do is impactful, and the story really affects that them really personally. Makes you feel like The Witcher. Yeah, that really, you know, it's got a little something <laughs> for everyone. And I just think, like, anyone who's interested in playing a game where, like, they really feel impactful and consequential to the story, and also has really good gameplay, and a lot of hours to sink in, and a DLC that's pretty much an entire game of its own, too, like... I, I really recommend a little subs and even you if you ever get the time to like, right. check it out. All right, man. We get it. You're a freaking... You're a secret agent for Project Red. I, I get it. It's okay. Buy I'm Cyberpunk the same way with, uh, 2077. Oh, yeah, dude. You're a huge Ape Escape show. <laughs> I remember when you were telling me the whole extended lore of Ace, A Ape Escape and the, and the intergalactic war between the, the apes and the escapes. 
Yeah, it's really just, a, a, you know, it's really a commentary on humanity and, and how we're all apes at yeah. the end of the day. At the end of the day, we're all apes. And, and then at the end of the day, it's Mark Wahlberg on that beach going, what have you done, you fucking psychopath? While the Statue <laughs> of Liberty is there. And then he finally realized that he was on that Earth was the whole Wahlberg? time. That was Mark Wahlberg? Yeah, in, plan in the Planet of the Apes movie, the ones before, like, the James Franco ones. Yeah, that was, that was Mark Wahlberg. What the fuck? <laughs> that just blow your mind my mind is always blown in these podcasts so I like how I'm trying to look it up and I looked up ape of escape <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be the next the next sequel to the last one. <laughs> oh man return well, to the apes of the escapes it's crazy I do dude. believe uh, that with that whole witcher sales pitch and and uh, simp tangent. Yeah, that's simp tangent. I think that's a good place to wrap up the podcast for this time, little subbers. Mainly because I'm getting pretty hungry. <laughs> Mainly because it's hot in here and I want to turn on my AC. Boy needs to get his uh, breakfast at 4.30 p.m. <laughs> that is, oh my boy. I, I already ate in the morning, so I'm good. Now I just got to sit down and edit. Going to be editing the whole day. So wish it, me man. luck, boy. Maybe you have finishing your... up some Animal Crossing. Then I got some uh, work to do for my own channel. So it'll be a pretty jam-packed day. Maybe some ring fit, you know. Yeah, let's get it. Basically just summed up the whole podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm and, and then wrap the day up with, uh, you know, some ape witcher. <laughs> some ape, <laughs> some, some ape escape three wild hunt. Alien ape witcher. Got to clarify. Fucking get it, dude. Let's, let's, let's go game. Until the next one, little suburbs. Bye. Bye.